Hi, I'm back and I am actually at the bed turning, so I'm hoping to get some good footage for you. And I will see you when the bed turning starts.
next quilt is a double wedding ring currently owned by Dennis Jarman of Jacksonville. It's 81 inches by 66 inches made by Effie Glenn Hulk and also quilted by Effie around 1959 or 60. And uh, the interesting information about it, Dennis's aunt gave him the quilt made by his great grandmother out of sewing scraps, saved by his grandmother Lucille. His aunt remembers covering up with this quilt when she was sick. Beautiful, beautiful quilt. One of the things you often see with older quilts are all the scraps. Many times, uh, particularly from the eras of about 1930 to 1950, most of the uh, quilts were actually scraps from various pieces of clothing, aprons, whatever. This particular quilt is a Sun Bonnet Sioux baby quilt owned by Elvis Smith of Jacksonville. And this quilt is 35 inches by 39 inches. It was made by Sue Brown in 1959. And Elvis says that this quilt was made from my mother's dresses and my Aunt Betty Anderson's dresses. It was very well loved and worn. And she said her Aunt Sue Brown cut it down for her mom from her twin for her twin babies. That was Elba and Eugene Tangman. The names on the quilt are from my mom and my Aunt Betty, but then the other names on the quilt, we think, are just from friends of theirs. Uh, the parents uh, were from, her parents were from Franklin. Girls, if you would tell me the names, I'll read off those other names on there. If you know any of these folks, uh, we'd like to know about it. Myrtle? Myrtle? Ruby? Ruby? I remember there's a Hattie. <laughs> Lawrence? Oh, Florence May. Florence May. Judy Gustafson of Waverly. This particular one uh, is really fascinating for me. It's 71 inches by 100, 138 inches. It was finished in the 1950s. It is hand pieced and hand quilted. The part that is so fascinating for me, I have never seen a dress and plate before that has an applique of a circle right in the middle of usually what is just the center circle on these dress and plates. It is an applique, well done. There are a couple spots where uh, it's not quite perfectly round, but it's a nice job of an applique work. And uh, Judy says that this was inherited from her grandmother, made before, way before 1960. Uh, she wasn't smart enough at the time to ask questions. We're all like that. And she said she really doesn't know much about quotes, but she just thought this would be good for the bed turning. I agree with Judy, I think it's a beautiful quilt. <coughs> now I talked to you about scrappy quilts. The next one is a scrappy quilt. It's currently owned by Sherry Beckwith of Jacksonville. The pattern is not really known, and I can't tell you it's all in rows because you get to certain parts and it's not really in rows. It doesn't go across in rows, it doesn't go up and down in rows. Mm -hmm. There aren't seams that necessarily come together in a particular place. Somehow somebody just put a bunch of scraps together and there you are, a scrappy quilt. Uh, Sherry says that the quilt was pieced on a treadle machine by her grandmother Van Lent in 1944. It was a gift for Sherry's parents' wedding. She recently found it in her mother's house after her mother passed away. It's made from leftover scraps of clothing, was tied on a quilt frame, and it's just really an interesting quilt and certainly will wake you up in the morning with all the bright colors. <laughs> and for those of you who like pink, we've got it for you. This is a little pink quilt. Whoa. Also owned by Sherry Beckwith. Needless to say, it is pink, it is scrappy. Uh, it is a, a six uh, point star. It's a really interesting quilt. Sherry said it was given to her actually by a customer. She works at Times Square and she was helping a lady with a missing part on her sewing machine. Two weeks later, the lady walks in with this quilt top and says, here for you. Isn't that a nice present from a customer? Ah, anyway, she said that uh, 
She was, the lady said she had found the quilt in her aunt's closet, so Sherry found a binding that would go with the, the pink quilt and had it quilted. And I love the back. Isn't that beautiful fabric? Okay, I told the 11 o'clock people that we have a lot of animals in this show. And it's like, what do you mean animals? I thought it was a quilt show. But anyway, this is a bear paw. And this particular uh, bear paw is really, really interesting because the quilt is owned currently by Martha House of Jacksonville. It is a bear paw in blue and maroon red. The size is 76 inches by 91 inches. And it was made in the early 1940s by Mary Matilda McClure and then tied by Ruth Hackett McClure. The most interesting uh, part, besides the, uh, what I would say would be an interesting design of the tying, because there, it is tied about every one and a half inches, uh, or maybe one and three fourths, depending on how you measure and where you measure. But it has a great deal of tying that has gone on in it. And uh, girls, I'll ask you to flip the quilt. Now what I find also extremely interesting is the back. The back is red comb chicken growing mash feed sacks. You can see the logos on the back here. And it is from red comb chicken, that was the brand, and there's a chicken in the middle of that uh, round logo over there. And this was growing mash that they used to feed their chickens. Back when. And for those of you who grew up wearing clothes made from feed sacks, brings back memories. Our next quilt is a very, very special quilt. It's currently owned by the Athens Municipal Library in Athens, Illinois. It is a windmill pattern in red, white, and blue, 63 by 93 inches. It was completed in 1944. It was begun by the quilter who uh, was both the piecing and the quilting uh, person for this, Helen Jensen Shannon. She made this quilt starting in March 1942 and finishing in June of 1944 while her husband was serving in the military. On this particular quilt are 250 men and women from Menard County who served during World War II. All of their names are embroidered on the quilt top. The quilt was donated then to the Athens Municipal Library following Helen's death. Now, being so special beyond that, the best part is the volunteers at the library have indexed all the names wow. that are embroidered on the quilt, all 250. So I have a map as well as a listing of every name and exactly where you can find it on the quilt with columns of A, B, C, D kind of thing and rows one, two, three, four, five. So I have a listing. If any of you might know people from the Menard County that you would wonder if their name might be on here, I have a two page listing of all the names with a chart or a map of where they're located on the particular quilt. So I think it's a super, super special quilt and because somebody in the community also agreed with that you know, the person who died who made it it was given to the local library for public information purposes i think this is just a super super special quilt so if anybody needs to see it one of the ladies in the 11 o'clock session i think she knew i think it was eight or ten uh people that were listed on there so pretty special I'm very pleased to happen to know somebody on the Athens Library Board. <laughs> this particular quilt, uh, I told you there was a lot of uh, animals in this show. Well, there's also fowl in this sh uh, particular show. Geese on the pond. This particular quilt is owned by Kara Hugenberg of Clayton, Illinois. And she says that this is, uh, as far as the age of it, she says, Old. <laughs> I felt like saying, so am I, Kara, but you know, I kind of know how old I am, but anyway. This particular quilt is 64 inches by 80 inches. 
It was made by Rare, uh, Ray Peters, and it was purchased actually at an estate sale of Ruth Armstrong. And Ruth and Dean uh, Scott, Kara's grandmother then, were lifelong friends and neighbors with those folks. And when the quilt was made by her grandmother, or was made by the grandmother of Ruth's husband, uh, Butler Armstrong. Butler was born in 1917, and he and Ruth were married in 1945, and soon moved into the house next door to Grandma. So I think this is a pretty special quilt, and I love the uh, sashing, which is the rose in between, because the cornerstones contain nine little pieces of fabric that end up being less than an inch each in size. Pretty small work there. Okay, to continue on with all the fowl, a hummingbird quilt. This is the hummingbird pattern, also owned by Kara Hummingbird of Clayton, Illinois. It's 81 by 75 inches, and she says that Margaret Stone, who was the piecer and quilter for this particular quilt, is the great grandmother of Kara. There were two of these quilts that are identical except for one thing. The binding. That's the only difference between two quilts that she made exactly this way. It's believed that Margaret made both these quilts and were given to her youngest daughter as a wedding gift. I'd be willing to accept that. <laughs> and I love the kind of rippled edge. It's not really a true scallop, but it's kind of a rippled edge and I think it's beautiful. Well taken care of too. You notice how uh, vibrant the colors still are. Now we have a blue light special, two for one. This is a red, white, and blue quilt currently owned by Anita Moody. It is uh, blocks, but it's actually in a around the world type design. And if you, uh, when you're looking at the big quilt here, you can see how bigger blocks start showing up as you look at the quilt. Uh, the, the quilt was made by Margaret Mead, uh, Margaret Moody, I'm sorry, uh, around 1948, it was uh, currently Anita's grandmother's, her husband's grandmother, and two aunts, uh, Ruth Moody Rule and Margaret Moody Brockhouse. She said originally she thought the other quilt was not completed before her husband outgrew it, but looking more closely, it's obvious it's been washed because the batting has shifted in the blocks. It's also interesting the Large block, in the large quilt, the blocks do start to form another pattern, but all red, white, and blue with uh, borders of red, white, and blue. And the reason that I say you get a two for one in this one, there's a baby quilt in red, white, and blue. But that one is just, all the blocks are in straight lines across. There are no uh, secondary patterns to that one. So pretty special. Uh, finished around 1942. When you start thinking about some of these quilts and you think they're 80 years old, quilters are people that really take nice care of quilts. And so it's, it's wonderful to watch. This particular quilt is owned by Julie Kennedy of Franklin. It's all kinds of scraps. It's 22 by 35 inches uh, in length. This particular quilt was Julie's doll quilt. It was made by Eva Robinson. Eva didn't happen to have any children, and she delighted in playing dolls with me. They lived in the country and had a big garden. She was a happy lady, always glad to welcome us. And Julie says, I just loved going to her home. We played with my baby dolls until I was fairly old, and you can see the quilt was well used. Our next quilt is a trip around the world. Remember the red, white, and blue? Well, now you have it in multicolor scraps. This one also is owned by Julie Kennedy. And this time, I don't usually do this, but this time I would like to read a little story to you, uh, kind of what I call the evolution of a quilter. And it starts out, last year I joined the ladies at the quilting group of the Senior Citizen Center. I was not a quilter. 
They do a magnitude of service projects, and I didn't know about sewing, so I sort of fit in. I had no interest in quilts. I grew up seeing them at farm auctions that my mother had dragged me to. Quilts were antique junk that my mother bought and we had to live with. I had one of the new and popular commercial items. So slowly but surely, I was beginning to look at quilts from a different angle and as listened and viewed the work the quilting ladies brought in. I went to the show last year out of curiosity. I was absolutely surprised to find myself enjoying the bed turning and roaming through the display of quilts. I had friends with me and we were picking what we liked best. Well, it's another year and now I'm a lover of quilts. An absolute lover of quilts. Because I have had the opportunity to listen to the ladies in the group speak so personally about their work and the work of others, I realized that each quilt is a painting far beyond the design and pattern. The colors chosen and how they are arranged speaks of the quilter's personal story. Happy day, happy colors. Also the purpose of the quilt and who it will go to. All are sewn into the colors, fabric, prints, and arrangements. There is so much. I see quilts as paintings and biographies sewn in fabric. I had this quilt you were looking at rolled up with the other dog blankets on the closet shelf. <laughs> I know I struggled with that one, sorry. <coughs> it had been there for years, maybe even 25 years. My niece had given it to me to wrap up my dog as I was bringing her home from the bed. I offered to return it and she declined as she was not sure where it had come from and her dog had a blanket anyway. <laughs> I can't give you any real history, but I've made up my own story. I think the quilter of this quilt is a country woman. She is a social lady that likes church picnics, has a bit of passion, patriotism, books, fixes lunches for the harvesters, enjoys her own children, the sky, and the community. The fabric patterns are simple and structured as is the design. I looked at her quilting stitches and they are small and precise. I would think her life is peaceful and happy. Julie, thank you. the evolution of not thinking about quilts to love quilts. Our next one is owned by Doris Myatt. It's called Broken Dishes. It's 70 by 78 inches from the early 1920s. It was made by Nola Myatt. <coughs> by Doris Wyatt's mother-in-law, Nola. The fabrics used are calico scraps, probably left from household sewing, uh, sewing and sewing projects, which was definitely common in the 1920s. Frugal housewives used every bit of their leftover fabrics. The quilt is visually striking due to the use of cool colors accented by the warm red conversation prints, such as featuring children or cats or whatever. The backing is a brown floral cotton print, and Doris says, this quilt was used a lot when our three children were small, thus causing a little bit of deterioration. A nice quilt. One of the nice things also about our uh, bed turning is the variety of quilts that get turned in, and I don't know how we do this year after year, but the community jumps in and says, here I got one, here I got one. So you get out to see all these beautiful quilts that are kept around. The next one is a double wedding ring, also from Julie Kennedy of Franklin. This particular quilt was made by Julia Sheen. 100 years old. And considering we're around uh, 2020 now, I'd say around 1920 is about the age of this particular quilt. So beautiful quilt. Quilt is owned by Pat Frost of Winchester. Pat can have 
hard to call this uh, nine patch on point. Actually, there are way more than nine pieces of fabric in each block, so I don't think that's the actual name of it, but I'm not sure of the uh, true name of it. Uh, the quilt is 66 inches by 80 inches, probably made about the 1920s up to 1930. It was made by her grandmother and her great-grandmother, Damaris Dyer and Cecil Carlton. That's all the information that she had on the quilt, but I, I really enjoy it, and I want to mention one thing at the top, and that is about eight, uh, I think about eight or nine inches of fabric on both sides, and that's a beard guard. Many of the men from that era had good size beards. And when they would sleep, they'd kind of raise their head a little bit and bring it back down. And it would shred, the, the beard was strong enough here that it would tend to kind of shred the uh, uh, fabric. And so many times they would put beard guards on there. And later I'll show you another quilt that will show you how well the beard guard protected the, the fabric underneath. Our next uh, quilt is a dressed in plate quilt currently owned by Sue Fox from the 1920s. Uh, it also uh, kind of is a really interesting one. If you notice the uh, hand quilting that's in there, it's very special. She said that she re received this quilt top from her grandmother. Uh, all of it is hand pieced and hand appliqued. And for those of you who might not be quilters or brand new quilters, an applique just means that you're going to take a fabric, uh, it might be the whole uh, round circle of those pieces, and then sew that onto another piece of fabric. So when you're sewing one piece of fabric onto another, that is applique work. So this is all hand applique. She really doesn't know much more about it, but she just loves it because she thinks it's so beautiful and I totally agree with her. next quilt is a very special one also. It is called a Penny Red and White Square. It's currently owned by Doris Myatt of Pekin. It is 64 inches by 83 inches. She said crib size, and I'm not sure why she said crib size, because that doesn't make good sense to me, because it's too large. But she said that the quilt was made by uh, Gladys Aileen Martin Williams. She started embroidering at the age of five with a little umbrella girl above the center square there that gives the date of 1926 when it was finished and her initials G-A-M. It was quilted by her mother, Eula Kate Patterson Martin. They lived in the Ebenezer area west of Jacksonville and her mother passed away when Gladys was 13 years old. Gladys was the, the mother of Doris Myatt of Pekin and Marilyn Hemingway of Jacksonville. And the quilt itself is a quilt of 35 six inch embroidered blocks of children, flowers, an owl for wisdom, and birds all over the entire quilt. When it was appraised by our appraiser here at the show, she said that the turkey red, which is that unique red color, in the quilt is color fast and was made in India, boiled for weeks, and the formula for this dye was lost to modern generations, so we no longer have the turkey bit. Our next quilt is owned by Teresa Rogers of Pawnee, Illinois, and this particular uh, quilt was made and quilted by her grandmother, Esta Dozier. It is 69 by 86, these are all individual wreaths that have been embroidered, and it's a beautiful job. Teresa thinks it's over 90 years old, and I would totally have to agree with her, but I think part of what I really particularly like is the quilting that has been done on this quilt, and then the prairie points around the entire page. <coughs> beautiful job. we have folks who come up and watch us put the bed turning backwards and so it's set up for the next time it's always interesting our next quilt is a block within a block four patch kind of uh, setup it's owned by Pat Frost of Winchester it's 78 by 76 inches 
and she said that this particular one was actually originally made as the grandmother of Joyce Coltus. So probably the most interesting piece of this, girls, if you can hold the back side of the quilt up, there is no batting in this particular quilt because the backing is a wool blanket. And so I'm sure that being under this one would be very toasty. Because actually it's kind of heavy. Our next quilt is also owned by Pat Frost of Winchester. It's kind of a mix of blocks. It has a hole in the wall and a couple other blocks in there. This quilt also was made by Damaris Dyer and uh, Cecil Carton Carlton, her great grandmother and grandmother. It was made around 1900. And the most interesting part of that also is the beard guard again at the top. If you can see, it's about an eight inch piece of fabric on both the front and the back. However, we must have had a little bit of problem having enough fabric because if you notice the corner over there by Elaine is something else. So we were very frugal. We made do with what we had. I also love the next one because it is a pinwheel, a nine patch pinwheel owned by Pat Frost of Winchester. It has blue sashing made in uh, the super early 1900s, 55 inches by 80 inches. Again, made by her grandmother and great grandmother. And this particular one, the beard guard at the top, peels back over there by Elaine. Can you peel the front back, Elaine? Then that, yeah, there you go. Um, I want them to be able to see that. Can you leave it open? sleeps on slip. Uh, part of what I wanted you to see here is the difference of the blues under mm -hmm. the guard versus the blues of the quilt as a whole. So you can see how much those beard guard fabrics protect the quilt as a whole. And so when the uh, fellows are sleeping on there with a, a beard that's going to constantly scratch and irritate the fabric, the fabric is not fraying, but the beard guard sure suffers. Our next quilt is a, a beautiful quilt owned by Sue Fox of Jacksonville. It's a strippy star. Uh, it is, uh, has been uh, looked at by our appraiser and she tells us the fabrics in there, which is a big bunch of them, are from 1880 to 1900. Uh, she received this quilt top from her grandmother. She didn't tell me the history. Amazingly, each scrappy strip star was hand stitched onto a muslin type foundation. Actually, it looks like a feed sack as it was loosely woven and coarse textured, completed with hand quilting just this year. Sue uh, got all the, um, the top and then wanted to finish it. Another thing that's very, very interesting that I have to admit I don't remember seeing, actually, I don't know if I've ever seen it before. If you notice the cornerstones, which is uh, in between each of the blocks there is what is called sashing. The blue is called sashing. Well, as the sashing intersects, there are cornerstones, and each of the cornerstones are also strip pieced. So there's lots of little pieces in there, making a very valuable quote from like 1880 to Now we have a special piece to finish off our show today. It uh, is currently owned by the Athens Municipal Library of Athens, Illinois. Uh, it is very different. It is a single block. This particular block we know for sure came from 1880 to 1885. That's as close as we can get it. And this particular block, although owned by the Athens Library, is part of their collection recently when Clara Grant presented a uh, quilt block piece by her aunt about 110 years ago. This was an article from a few Some years ago. It has been appropriately the framed frame. by Mrs. Grant just for the library. And here's the interesting part. Uh, Margaret Elizabeth Bryan, who originally owned and, and made this block, uh, was born in 1853 on a farm in Morgan County 
which was purchased from the government by her father. Her brother, uh, and his, her brother Andrew was this lady's father. And she said that she was a quiet girl who entertained herself sewing, first with dolls and later with quilts. She learned to make dainty little stitches. At the age of 18, she made a quilt containing 20,000 pieces. Now, I don't know about you, but I put some quilts together with a lot of pieces before, but I can't come close to 20,000. Each piece was small enough to be entirely covered by a dime. He had good eyes. With that, I wish to thank all of you for attending today. It is our pleasure to put together this show because we too enjoy seeing all these quilts. So with that, thank you for coming and please enjoy the rest of the show.